So hi guys, it's Monica. So I am really excited because tonight I am doing the first video for my Disney series. So if you have not already guessed by the title, we're going to be doing Beauty and the Beast. So this meal is going to be really simple and something that inspired me from the movie. So if you guys want to see how to do it, then keep watching. Okay, for this recipe you're going to need cheese. I'm using Italian style cheese. It has six different cheeses in it. It has mozzarella, provolone, Parmesan, Romano, Fontina, and Asiago, but you can use any cheese that you'd like. I'm also using these small uh, peppers. You can use regular full-size bell peppers if you'd like. I'm using a purple onion. You can use whatever type of onion that you like. I'm using baby portobello mushrooms. I'm using boneless beef, but you can use any type of beef that you'd like. Also, minced garlic. If you have fresh, feel free to use that. You're going to need two cans of cream and mushroom soup and one box of beef stock. You're also going to need some rolls that are going to act as bowls. I'm using Kaiser rolls. If you are a baker, feel free to bake your own. If not, then go ahead and get some from the store. Okay, so we're going to start out with cutting up our beef pieces. Now, if you're doing a really hearty like beef stew, then these pieces are great for that. But Unfortunately, the size of our little bread bowls, these are way too big. So you might actually be able to get two meals out of this portion of uh, beef I have here. So I'm just going to cut them into like little, little sliced pieces really. Just like that. We're just going to cut them up. Okay, now that we have got our bowl full of meat cut up, and this was about half of that package just because, like I said, the size of the bowls. So, what we're going to do now is go ahead and add some seasoning. So, we're going to add some salt, and I'm going to put about a teaspoon and a half of salt in here. I'm also going to add some onion powder. I'm going to do about a teaspoon and a half as well. And then we're going to add some black pepper. Now we're just going to take a fork, kind of mix it all together just to kind of get all the seasonings coated. You want all your meat nice and coated. Okay, okay now we're going to take some Worcestershire sauce, I hate pronouncing that. We're going to put just a couple of splashes in. Not too much. And we're just going to stir that around. The best way to describe this dish is a Philly cheesesteak sandwich in a stew form in a bread bowl. Like the best way for me to describe it to you, literally. Okay, so now we're going to take a couple uh, tablespoons of flour. This is all purpose flour. And we're just going to coat our meat in it. And the reason for this is because I'm going to cook it in a little bit of oil in my pan. And we want to get a little bit of a crunch, but not too much. Just make sure it's all covered. If you need a little bit more, that's fine. I'm going to add one more. Okay, this looks pretty good. Okay. Alright, so now we're going to go over to the stove and we're going to start that process and I'll show you what to do over there. Okay, in this skillet I have a tablespoon of extra virgin olive oil and I have two tablespoons and I have two tablespoons of the minced garlic. So we're going to go ahead and get our skillet turned on here. We're going to let this oil come up to heat. We're going to spread the garlic around, let that heat up and kind of flavor the oil a little bit, and then we're going to drop in our meat. So I'm going to go ahead and let this come up to heat, and then we'll drop in our meat. Okay, so as you can tell, we're hot, literally. So we're just kind of mixing the garlic around a little bit so it doesn't burn, because burnt garlic is really yucky. We're on medium-high heat, so we're going to go ahead and dump our meat into the skillet here. 
Okay? Okay, so we're just going to kind of break apart the meat so we can get it all nice and cooked up. Don't worry about if it's a little bit pink in the middle. You can always finish that off in the oven. But right now we just want to get a nice little sear on the outside of the meat. So we're just going to keep kind of breaking this up a little bit. And flip it over, get all that garlic infused with it. I'm going to go ahead and brown this up and when it's almost done, then we're going to add the peppers and mushrooms. So during that time, feel free to take, the, take your time and go ahead and cut up your vegetables and get your cans open, um, just like I've done. Okay, so now that our meat is browned up and there's still a few pink pieces, like I said, that's okay. We're going to add a little bit of butter in there, as you can tell. We're going to go ahead and throw that in the middle, kind of stir that around. That'll melt down. And we're going to go ahead and throw our mushrooms, onions, and bell peppers. My husband was nice enough to cut all of these up for me. So if you have one, like I said, get them involved. So we're going to go ahead and just push all of those off in here. And he's a cameraman. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so we're just going to get a nice color on these vegetables. We're going to kind of just flavor them up a little bit. So you just want to mix it around, get that butter melted. And you're just going to cook it for at least another five minutes or so. You can add a couple splashes more of the Worcestershire sauce. Doesn't that look beautiful? Look at all those colors, those mushrooms. We're leaving them big, um, like you see here, just to kind of give it more of a rugged look, hence the beast. This is more of the beast meal than it is uh, bells. The dessert will be bells, but I'll show you guys that in just a little while. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and turn this up just a little bit and let this cook, like I said, for another uh, five to seven minutes, and then I'll be back to show you guys what to do. All right, so this is to my liking, so we're going to go ahead and add in our beef broth. So we're going to add in about two cups of this. Stir. And don't forget to refrigerate that. You can keep it up to 14 days in the refrigerator. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and stir this around a little bit. We're going to let it come to a simmer, and then we're going to turn it on low, and we're going to add in our cream of mushroom soup. We don't want it to burn, so therefore turn it on low. And then while we're doing that, I'll show you guys how to do the bread bowls. Okay, so I've added in the two cans of cream and mushroom soup, and I've just mixed it really well. So we're going to turn that on low and just let it hang out and simmer for about 10 to 15 minutes. You can let it go longer if you like. So now we're going to get started on the bread bowls. All right, we're fixing to make the bowls for our Philly cheesesteak bowls. And we just got some uh, Kaiser rolls here, store-bought brand. Uh, you can bake your own if you'd like. I've actually done it that way before, but it's a little longer process, a little more complicated. So what we're going to do, we're just going to hollow them out. i got a small bread knife here. Now you want to leave it fairly thick on the sides and the bottom so that your stew doesn't bleed through real bad. So we're just going to kind of carve us out a little hollow spot right here. i got my bread knife. Alright, made my incision around the edges. Now I'm just going to take a Spoon. I don't see if I can. I'm just gonna kind of pierce that a little bit. I'm trying to stay off the bottom at least a half an inch or better, so that all the juice from our Philly cheese steak stew doesn't run out, and the bowl holds our stew like it's supposed to. So let's see what we got here. Just pop that cap right out of there. We'll save this bread and dip with it. Cut it up into cubes. All right, see, this is what we got so far. That looks pretty good, but now, if you like, you take a little bit more out of the bottom. Yeah, this is not... I don't think I'm going to take much more than that out. Because this bread right here, as spongy as it, as it is, it's going to absorb a lot of liquid. So we'll just get that little bit right there out of the way. And that's what we have. 
That's the bowl for our Philly cheesesteak stew. Okay, this is done. I've turned it off and it's been off now for about five minutes to kind of let it cool down a little bit before we try to stick it in our bread bowls. So I've got my soup dipping spoon here. I'm going to put our pan with our bowls on it right next to this just because I don't trust these bowls well enough to actually hold it and then try to put the, um, the soup, the stew in there. So I'm just going to go ahead and start filling them up just like that. I'll probably take, I'm guessing, maybe a spoon and a half to two to fill the bowl up. Just like that. I'll go ahead and do these. Mm, that looks so good. If it eases over the side, don't worry about that. I would recommend putting these on a plate or a bowl. I wouldn't try to just eat it just like this, but I would put something underneath it. That way, if it does run out, then it's not all over your table or, you know, your hand. Okay. So, as you see, I have plenty of leftovers, but just because there's only a few of us eating tonight, we went with just four bread bowls, but there's enough here to do, I'm guessing, at least about six bread bowls. And you can always save the bread that you hollowed out to dip in uh, what's left over. So now we're going to go ahead and put our cheese on top of these. So you just want to cover all of that stew mixture up on top. So put a nice helping of cheese. Don't go skimpy on this. And then once we get all of these cheesed up, we're going to pop them in the oven under our broiler just for a couple of, just for a couple of minutes, just, just to melt the cheese, because everything else is already cooked. So we just want to melt the cheese and maybe get a nice little crust on the top of the bread. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and pop these in the oven. Okay, now we're on to our dessert for the Beauty and the Beast. The dessert is more of a reflection on Belle because it is really sweet, and of course she is sweet. The uh, Philly cheesesteak uh, stew was more of a reflection of the Beast. It was really hearty and thick and just meaty and just more rugged, kind of like Beast. Okay, for this dessert you are going to need these little dessert cups, which are just mini angel food cakes. You're going to need strawberries. You're going to need whipped cream, and you can use, which is optional, strawberry topping. Alright, so we're just going to cut these. We're going to take off the stem. Just set that aside if you want to use some of the leaves to decorate, or you can use mint. We're going to turn it up on its side, just like this, and we're going to cut down, just like that. And you're going to cut the whole strawberry, strawberry very carefully. Try not to cut your fingers. And these are going to resemble rose petals, just like the rose in the movie, if you haven't already guessed. So you're just going to cut them, like I said, very carefully. Use as many as you need. So I'm just going to finish cutting up all of these the same way, and then I'll show you guys how to spread them out. Alright, so we have our strawberries all nice and cut up. What you're going to do is you're going to take one of your strawberries, cut the end off of it so it can sit flat in your shell, and cut the very tip off and just slice down the sides to act as the inner um, of your rose bed. So, I have our little angel food cake um, right here. We're going to go ahead and take our Cool Whip, and we're going to just go around the edge of it very slowly. You can get really fancy with this or not. I'm not really going to go too fancy. And then we're going to put just a little dab in the middle. And then we're going to start taking our strawberries. Here's the one that I have uh, sliced just like so for the inner of our uh, rosebud. We're going to set that right in the middle. And that uh, Cool Whip kind of holds it in there. So we're going to start taking our strawberries and placing them around the sides just like so. Just like that. Now, if you want to go extra, which I am, I'm putting extra ones on there. I'm putting them, as you can see, like in between. So we're kind of like building the rows, so to speak. But 
but you can put as many or as little as you like um, in there. Just however many fit. Oh no, they're trying to come out. Okay, well, we'll go with a little bit smaller one. Okay, so once it is like that, if you want to take a little bit of your strawberry topping here, we heat this up a little bit so it'll um, drizzle a lot nicer. Just take it and just kind of drizzle a little bit all on there. Don't want to get too much. Just kind of make it look fancy though. Don't worry about if it gets on the plate. Don't worry about all that. I just want a little bit on there. Just like that. And now if you want to get really fancy, like I said, if you don't have mint, you can always just use the little stem and stick that there. And voila. That is it. So how neat is that? Pretty neat, huh? Okay guys, that was it for my Beauty and the Beast um, in the Disney series. I hope you guys enjoyed watching and I hope you try the recipes. If you have not subscribed, then please do and don't forget to like, leave me comments, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye guys!